Hello everyone. Um, I just want to show you a quick tip here in Houdini to poly reduce your very dense uh, geometries. So this is a tip that I guess most of you are already aware of, but otherwise I guess this is the time to learn something new. So when dealing with extremely heavy geometry, and here I'm talking about you know geometry with millions and millions and millions of, of of polygons one of the first things that we want to do is to poly reduce that geometry to get less points or less uh, geometry in in our assets um, so this is something very common that you would have to do when dealing especially with uh, uh, LiDAR scans. So um, if you get a geometry that has been created using a point cloud from a LiDAR scan, you might end up with an insane amount of polygons, like potentially hundreds of millions of polygons, right? So that is something that is impossible to work with. Um, you can also find yourself in a similar situation when working with 3D scans, something that comes from photogra photogrammetry, right? especially if you're dealing with raw photogrammetry. Again, that would be like 300 or 500 million polygons. Same thing, something that is not very suitable for, for any operation that you want to do. And uh, maybe that is also something common uh, that uh, you can find when working with um, uh, assets that have, have been created procedurally in Houdini and you want to add uh, multiple frequencies to that asset, uh, you need to increase the, the poly count quite a lot, convert that to VDB, then back to polygons, then keep adding detail and whatnot. So it is very common having to, 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 to deal with uh, millions of millions of polygons. Um, you might be tempted to use a poly reduce and just connect your 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 input geometry to the poly reduce. The problem with this, and by the way, the poly reduce works very well. But again, if you have 500 million polygons, the poly reduce will take ages to process, right? It will take a very long time. And potentially, you might run out of memory. So sometimes you're not really able to use poly reduce. So let's pretend that this rock that I have here is 500 million polygons, which is not the case, right? This one is only 1 million polygons, but uh, you know, this is what I had available at the moment. But let's pretend for, for the sake of this video that this geometry has 500 million polygons. And we cannot use the poly reduce for, you know, the reasons that I just gave you. What we want to do, or what I usually do in these situations, is to split the geometry in multiple parts and then using multi-threading, poly reduce each of those parts individually and at the end just combine everything. And that is one, much faster, and second, uh, not only is much faster, but it actually works. But again, as I was saying before, if you run a poly reduce in a 500 million polygons geometry, most likely you will run out of memory. So, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to get out of that situation. All right, so what I tend to do is create a subnetwork here that I can call something like reduce polygons or something like that. And by the end of this video, uh, you will realize that you can convert this into an HDA and create your own tool so you can reuse this setup uh, in the future as many times as you need. So here in the poly reduce, uh, let me get rid of this output. We can, uh, we can use it at the end. I'm just going to create a null here, and this would be my input geometry, right? So let's call it input. Uh, okay, cool. And yeah, as I was saying before, the plan here is to split the geometry in multiple sections. So one way of doing that is just by creating a scatter here on the side. And um, the force total count, I would set this um, to the amount of threads that you want to use in your in your computer for this operation. So let's pretend my computer has, I don't know, 16 threads, right? So I'm going to set this one to 16 or 32 or 64 or whatever you have available at your disposal. So I'm going to set this one to 16. And the relaxed iterations, I'm going to increase these a lot. So I get something that is evenly distributed, 
Okay. Uh, great. Then we need to transfer these uh, point IDs that we're creating here, because remember that uh, these points have an ID, right, or a number. So you can see each of those uh, uh, points can be identified easily. We want to pass that information to the geometry, so we can split the geometry based on those points that we have here. So I'm going to add an attribute create. I'm going to set it to points. So make, make sure it's running over points. This should be an integer value. So I'm going to set it to integer, and I'm going to give it, um, uh, and I'm going to give it a name. Um, and in this case, well, I mean, actually, you can use any name, but I'm going to name it class because that's an attribute that I'm going to use later because I'm going to run this through a for loop. And, uh, you know, if I have the, the name here already, I don't need to create it later. So I'm going to set it to class. And for value, I'm going to set the value to PT number, which is the ID of my points. So now, if I check, um, where are my points? Here, if I check my points, I see this class attribute that we created here. And because it's using PT number, we get from 0 to 15. So those are the 16 points that we created We created up here. OK, good. Uh, now we need to pass that information. So I'm going to create an attribute transfer from here to here. And the attribute that I want to transfer is the class point attribute. So now we have that attribute in the geometry. We can actually visualize uh, that attribute to see what it's doing to the geometry. So if I add an attribute randomize after the attribute create here, this is randomizing the color, right? So in this attribute transfer, is if I also transfer the color, there you go. Now I can see the islands that I'm creating for my geometry or the different slices, the different parts that I'm going to poly reduce individually. Instead of tackling like a 500 million polygon, I would be just doing one of these parts at the time, uh, which would be, you know, a few hundred uh, thousand uh, polygons. Okay. Cool. Well, we don't need the, the, the color attribute. This is just to show you clearly what we're doing here. So we can remove it and we can disable this attribute uh, randomize. OK, great. Now I'm going to add a for each connected piece. That is all good. So this one has this connectivity that creates the attribute class. We actually don't need it because we just created this attribute up here that we called class, knowing that we're going to take it through a, a for each loop. So let's get rid of that one. When you do that, this one most likely will lose the, con the connection. So let me delete channels and call this one class. And the problem, uh, actually, if I create another one here on the side, you can see that this uh, connectivity will create these um, um, will create these um, over primitives. But when we created this uh, attribute class, we created that on points. Uh, so basically, we need to promote the class attribute from points to primitives. So let's create an attribute promote here. And we want to promote class from points to primitives. So now this one should work. There you go. So now this is working. And as you can see, this is just one of the slices, one of the islands that we want to treat individually. OK, cool. So now you might say, let's add a poly reduce here. Let's reduce this by 10% and we're done. Yes and no, right? I mean, this will work. The problem is that if we poly reduce the entire island, once we do it, once we run this for loop uh, over 
all the islands, there would be a gap between them, right? There would be a gap. And the reason being that we are poly reducing the edges and of course they wouldn't connect to each other um, uh, appropriately. So we want to keep the edges intact. For that, we are going to create a group for the border or the edge of each island. So let's go here. Let's name this one, let's say border or edge or whatever you want. And we want to run this over edges. We don't want to use a base group. We want to include edges and we want to enable and share edges, meaning that it's going to select only the edges or the perimeter or the border of each of these islands. Okay, great. Now we can add the poly reduce. And yeah, I set it to keep 10% of the total poly count, but I want to enable hard edges and select my border group. Okay, so if we run this over the poly reduce, you can see that it's reducing everything, but the edges remain intact. So we're not destroying the connection between, uh, between islands. Let's take a look at everything and see if it's actually uh, working. <clears throat> this might take a couple of seconds. Okay, done. Cool. So this is actually working, right? Um, it has poly reduced everything, but the edges, and as you can see clearly that uh, the edges are not poly reduced, but we don't have any gaps. So that's what we want. So that is working uh, perfectly fine. Something else that we should do here is to add a compile block, put that one at the beginning and put that one at the end. And now set the for each end to be multi-thread. So then it would be faster. Okay, cool. So now, what is the next step? Well, the next step is to actually poly reduce the edges because that, you know, in a very heavy geometry, that could be millions of polygons um, or at least hundreds of thousands. So we want to poly reduce that, but we want to do it now after we've done the first poly reduce without destroying the connections between the different islands or the different parts of the geometry. So um, let's add a group delete uh, because we had this uh, uh, border um, that border group that we created that we created before, right? Uh, so let's actually uh, let's actually get rid of that. Let's make a little bit of room here. Put that one there, right? Uh, because here. Here we still have that border group, so let's remove everything so we don't have any groups anymore. Okay, check that things are working, it should work. Okay, then we're good. All right, let's tidy this up a little bit. All right, uh, another issue that we have currently is like all these islands are separated, right? So to fix that, let's just add a fuse here. And now this is just one connected geometry. Okay, great. Cool. Um, Um, okay, cool. So we can continue now. Um, and again, what we want to do now is to poly reduce that um, connection between islands. Uh, we might have to actually go back here. So, because we need a group just for that, right? So let's uh, create another group here. 
uh, we deleted the first border group with this group delete. So we can actually call this one uh, the same name again. So we can call this one uh, border. I don't want to have a base group uh, and actually want to run these over points. And same thing, I just want to select the unshare edges. And this is what I get now, right? A group for, for the edges. Okay, great. Um, let's go back here, make sure everything is still working. Okay, it is working. That's all good. This uh, group here, we created created that uh, over points. So we need to promote that to primitives. So let's do group promote. And we want to transfer to primitives border. There you go. So now we only get those parts that we uh, didn't poly reduce before. OK, cool. Uh, from here, let's add split. In this split, make sure that we are selecting the border group. All right. And if we add an all here and an all there, we get those connecting geometries and the rest. So these we don't want to touch at all. We've done all the work here before. Now we just need to do it um, to know it to do it here. All right. Let's add another edge group. So let's go here. Let's call nope. I want to run these over edges and same deal. Just want the unshare edges. Okay, that's all good. We can call this whatever you want. Let's call it border two. Okay, let's add another poly reduce. And in this one, let's go to the hard edges. Let's select border two. Enable that one. And now we want to poly reduce this. I don't know. Whatever. Right, so let's say fifty percent. Obviously, these uh, doesn't need to be reduced as as much as before. Okay, cool. Uh, right, so here, if we merge that with that, we should get something that looks pretty decent now, right? Yep, and here you can see that, you know, this was before, and now we can just poly reduce it till we get something that matches the rest of the geometry. So this works uh, fairly well. Okay, something like that. All right, cool. Uh, then we also need to fuse this again, right? So let's just add a fuse and that should be it. Let me grab my output, pipe it here and we are good to go right so now we have a poly reduced version of this uh, rock here so we went from there to there and this is working much faster now it's multi multi-threading and, and this is basically the way that i do it when i have to deal especially with 3d scans or um, or lidar geometry uh, or even cad geometry Okay, cool. So of course now you can get this uh, thing, this subnetwork converted into an HDA, expose some parameters, and this would be your poly reducing tool. All right, that was it.